Welcome to the Tea Grannies. I'm Elise. And I'm Maria. Today we're here with author Kate McWilliams to chat about self-publishing. So pour yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. I first killed someone when I was 16. It wasn't premeditated, but I'm not sure that makes it any better. It still happened. I still did it. She's still dead. After, my mother couldn't look at me for the longest time, what felt like forever. Her gaze always just clearing the top of my head, jumping from here to there, afraid to linger, pretending to be distracted when, in actuality, she was laser-focused on avoiding eye contact with me as if my evil was transferable and would spread like black mold over her heart. I didn't go to prison, or even juvie. Not a single day paid for my crime, like they knew it would haunt me, and that was punishment enough. Nobody pulled me aside at customs with a warrant for my arrest, or bothered to contact me since I've been back. A miracle I am too numb to appreciate. Killing changes you curdles you from something smooth and shiny and full of hope, a seed with so much potential, into a monster, hideous and unrecognizable. A reverse metamorphosis, layers of yourself, your humanity, dying, flaking, falling, decomposing. She calls me on my way home from work, my mom. She's the only one who does, and I answer because just a few months ago, I thought I might lose her. The diagnosis forced me to imagine a life without her, and the outcome was revolting, horrifying, an abomination. Hey, baby, she says, with such clarity, I know she's not stoned, and relief trickles through me, loosening my shoulders. Our conversations get too weird when she's high. She does not reference my birthday, but she skirts around the topic. Doing anything fun tonight? Since I haven't made any friends here yet, she is referring to Liam, who doesn't understand my aversion to celebrating, who has been kept in the dark because we haven't been dating that long. So overall, the first paragraph is absolutely fabulous. What a hook. Uh, I do like the bit about her mother not being able to look at her after, but that being said, I think it could be condensed. It's a pretty run-on sentence. Um, The listeners obviously can't see what we can see, but from after my mother to black mold over her heart is all one sentence, and Mm. it bogs down the beginning, which is a real shame after such a killer opener. Mm -hmm. I really liked the A Miracle I Am Too Numb to Appreciate line very much. It clues us right into our protagonist's mental state. I liked the monologue, but it's a little bit of a run-on sentence as well. I think it could be mixed with the phone call scene Uh, and that way we still get to see the inner struggle but we don't lose any forward motion and a few things i'd like to see in this first page that are missing to me is the main character's name if possible and some setting right now there isn't Mm -hmm. any and it reads kind of like a journal entry Um, that's not really a bad thing but the readers need a feel and a visual for what the main character is doing so those are my only suggestions. I thought it was great. I loved the hook. The hook was mm-hmm. my favorite part. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think my my comments are all pretty similar. Uh, the first line, I was immediately intrigued, obviously. And by now, listeners probably know that anything with murder will get our attention. So Murder, death, kill. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that immediate introduction of that particular plot point is fabulous. Um, and I also love how the author has established the protagonist's regret so intentionally Mm -hmm. and powerfully within the first page like you know okay they killed someone and they were they deeply regret it it has affected them in a big way um and that's going to be a big big part of the story um and i definitely want to know what actually happened like was it actually murder was it manslaughter was it an accident um because i'm inherently distrustful of all protagonists so (laughs) i i don't (laughs) believe yet that they're actually guilty i want to be able to see that for myself based on um the events that led to it um would very much like to find that out um yeah i especially honed in on the the line um about being a monster hideous and unrecognizable like 
that have caught my attention, that's very intense, um, and I'd like to put that against the facts to see if it measures up. Um, and similar to what Maria said, I'd recommend that the author revise this first page for a couple of things. Uh, the first being setting, because I, I don't know the time period or where this story is starting or um, where we're at. And then who the protagonist is, because we don't get any details, except that they killed someone when they were 16. Um, which suggests a couple mm -hmm. things. They're older than that now, and also they have or will kill someone again um eventually within the story because it says it's the first time that they killed someone so that insinuates a second time mm -hmm. at least which that's very interesting to me um i like that little hint there and makes me curious about the rest um yeah but as a reader i would say i felt pretty unmoored in this one um, I would have loved some setting descriptions. And like Maria, my main suggestion would be to merge the the monologue about the killing at the beginning with the phone call and then sprinkle in those descriptions, like start with some setting of where they are. Are they walking home? Are they driving home um, when they answer this phone call? And then because it's the mother calling, that directly relates to the monologue above that had details about the mother as well. So you could like merge those thoughts together relatively easily. Um, and that would help uh, just anchor the reader better in the scene and then yeah beyond that just finish your story please so that i can find out who died and who's guilty and how that all works because i genuinely <laughs> want to know so welcome kate i'm so happy we met on bookstagram and you know i loved your first book and the other ones are on my tbr of course so uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the class <laughs> Hi. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Kate McWilliams and I write contemporary romance. For now, I have plans to branch out and do some other uh, subgenres of romance as well. But um, yeah, that's me. I have two books out. My third is coming out in three days. Ooh. And I have a very busy schedule after that, too. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Um, yes. Hello. Uh, this is the first time I'm meeting you, even yes. even uh, um, techno t on, via technology. So it's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to have you. Um, you mentioned that you might branch out into sub sub, sub genres. I wonder if you're comfortable sharing what those might be. Yes. So I definitely want to get into um, some darker romance, and then forge that with like fantasy or PNR. I'm using a different pen name for that because they're just mm -hmm. going to be so totally different. Oh, sure. Yeah. But it's exciting though. I'm hoping to do that like sometime at the end of next year. Awesome. That's, That's so exciting. exciting. Right up Maria's alley. <laughs> I know. I'm sitting here like really excited. I'm really like, happy you just finally hit me. It's probably both. Uh, <laughs> um, so Light in the Dark was the first book that you ever published, right? The first novel first I have novel. published. Okay yeah poetry before but yes okay and then so, and then you've got one more out and one more that's coming out on September 15th right yep yeah because this episode's going to air in October I think so it'll okay. be out by then so, so yeah for the listeners FYI and then you have another one that's on the way <laughs> so that's yeah. pretty exciting I like that mm -hmm. and you'll continue with self-publishing have you considered like traditional publishing at all or are you happy with your self-publishing I really haven't considered it. Um, mm -hmm. I never considered it. It's an awesome path. Back in the day when I wanted to be a writer as like a teenager, it was kind of traditional publishing was mostly the only way to go. Mm -hmm. And so I always wanted to do that. But, you know, you go to school and kind of like people get in your head like, oh, well, choose a career that's going to like be mm. stable and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And so I kind of put it on the back burner and stopped working on that. And then as the years went by, self-publishing became like a huge industry. And I always wanted to and wanted to and just never did until finally one day I was like, what am I waiting for? Like, I'm, <laughs> like I could have had a totally different life if I had done this five years ago. So, um, yeah, so I just went for it. And I think what helped was I read a lot of indie published books. And so, mm -hmm. and I've kind of had connections with authors who self self published and that was, I mean, they love it. And mm -hmm. it kind of was just the way to go for me. I also have no patience. <laughs> so <laughs> the idea of like 
hoping and waiting and maybe getting somebody interested one day, I was like, no, I can't. I'm, that's not for me. <laughs> I just want to like get my stuff out and move on to the next one. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at now. Like I've always wanted to be traditionally published and the bookstagram account and Elise have really helped me see like, oh, like indie publishing might be the way, especially because I am a control freak and I am impatient. I'm like, this could be good for me. This could be really good. I, and I've been querying and it's hard. It is so hard. I can't imagine. I mean, I've looked into it. I've researched it. I've done all of, you know, the steps up until doing it. Mm. And it's terrifying and hard. And I mean, I, you know, more power to all the people that do it. I just, like you said, the control aspect is amazing. I love mm. And I love also being able to change things and mm -hmm. being able to be like, you know what? I didn't like that cover. Like I switched one of my covers because it didn't turn out like in thumbnails and stuff as pretty as I wanted it. And I was oh, like, okay. oh, I can change that. <laughs> like I can do whatever I want. And it's so nice. And mm -hmm. having the final say is so nice. Now that's not to say that like one day if I had the opportunity to, to publish traditionally, I wouldn't do it. Like I would definitely consider it, but mm -hmm. um it's kind of hard to beat the amount of control and the amount of like, it's all my, I like, I don't know. It's fun kind of having your own business and like, this is all mine and it might mm -hmm. not, be, you know, massive numbers compared to traditionally published authors, but it's building something is really mm -hmm. exciting and, and rewarding. I bet. Yes. Yeah, so well. exactly. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, adding that to my to-do list, <laughs> give up on querying, start, start your self-publishing journey. <laughs> well, hey, the hybrid, the hybrid model is a thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can always sure. do both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That, um, thank you for sharing that. I'm very intrigued by where you're at because I just, you know, I've self-published my eBooks recently and that was mostly just an experiment. So hearing it from someone who's been doing it for longer than I have and you have print books and everything is very cool. Um, my next question is, do you write full time? What does like your day-to-day -day life look like? So I do write full time. I have, um, I had a full time like separate job and I, had some health issues and ended up kind of making the choice like, okay, I have to either take a leave of absence and I can work on all of the stuff that I want to work on, or I can try to push through and keep putting it off and like not being able to throw myself fully into it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to leave my job back in April. Um, and, you know, it was kind of like I was pushed into it for things I didn't control, but it was a blessing and it's still scary. Um, I do make money doing like side work, like as mm -hmm. a proofreader and oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So I do have income from that as well. It's not just okay. author stuff, but I'm hoping, you know, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can keep this going and not have to like go back. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we'll see. I don't know. It is mm -hmm. possible, but it is a lot of work and it is, kind of scary but mm -hmm. and I have noticed a lot of authors like even tr traditionally published authors like it's not their only uh way of getting income like they almost all have one or two other things that they do like proofreading or like um Eileen Cook was our mentor for the writer studio she does that she has like a few other things going on and she's like a successful traditionally published author I just think part of its writing community, it's nice to be involved in other ways, but I think a lot of it is it's just not really realistic to have writing fund your whole life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I love being able to step away from my projects and mm -hmm. work on something else and mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of like, I've been making graphics for people and doing a lot of like organization, like making social media calendars for people. And I enjoy that. It's fun to me. So it's a really fun part of my day. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not like, again, that's not a full time career either, but mm -hmm. it adds extra mm -hmm. uh, income and it just gets me out of my head and my own stories for a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's also a good point. I didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so considering um, you'll have to remind me of the, the company that you have started for it's proofreading and the social media stuff. Um, I didn't write it down at bad memory. So oh. you'll have to tell us about it. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's called Ink and Earth Studio. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend Shannon and I um, really just kind of had always planned on branching out and doing this because we, again, it's just stuff we enjoy. And we figured like self-publishing is so expensive and mm -hmm. it's nice when you can kind of like trade services or help other authors um, or offer services at like, you know, a rate that is pretty affordable compared to a lot of the bigger mm -hmm. companies that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And since we had just gone through like publishing our first books was really when we decided to do it because we were like, look at all this money we're spending. And like, there has to be an easier way. Like there has to be I mean, at least another option for people because also there are amazing people that do this stuff, but they book up really quickly. Like you can only do yeah. so many at a time. Mm -hmm. So I know so many editors and proofreaders and people that do graphics, but like they're booked solid. And so we just wanted to be able to help like our little community and mm -hmm. offer another option. I love that. So mm -hmm. how much time do you spend like writing and then how much time do you spend working on ink and earth stuff? Like, and and then marketing on top of that as well yeah honestly marketing is probably what i spend the most time on mm -hmm. and okay. but it's also because i enjoy that part <laughs> a mm -hmm. lot of people don't but i genuinely enjoy um like social media and especially tiktok i got really into this year which mm -hmm. i hadn't used before very much at all and i was like scared of it and unsure but now that I'm there it's so much fun and I love Instagram because it's so pretty mm -hmm. but TikTok is like just casual and like you think something and you can post it and and it has pretty stuff too but it's a lot less formal than Instagram so it's kind of fun to experiment and um it's you know a good community too so mm -hmm. I end up spending weight more time than I probably should marketing <laughs> because I'm constantly, you know, coming up with ideas for, you know, videos and making graphics is so much fun, but it, I will sit there and like make graphic on my phone while I'm doing something else. And I'll spend an hour <laughs> I don't even realize time has passed and I've made one and it doesn't always take that long, but I get so into it and like hyper-focused that I don't realize that time has passed. So um yeah so I probably market the most but then writing um I'm trying to get better at having a schedule and doing a little every day mm -hmm. but that's not where my brain is <laughs> so it's kind of like the struggle of um procrastinating <laughs> and like getting <laughs> I I often work through the stories in my head before I really write them out and mm -hmm. so when I write them, it might only take me like a week or two to like write it out because I've worked out everything. Um, but that's not conducive <laughs> to having like, I think longevity because you just get burnt out really easily. So I'm trying to kind of write a little every day. And then with Ink and Earth, I just kind of, it depends on, you know, the clients. Um, I usually spend like a couple hours a day, but you know, some days none, some days I'll spend all day on their stuff. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a lot of um, diversity in your days, which can be really interesting and, yeah. and keeps you from getting bored. Like my day job is super boring. It's always the same. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm always trying to get my work done like as fast as I can. So I can go do something that is more interesting, mm -hmm. like writing or like bookstagram I spend way too much time on there and all yeah. the time I spend on TikTok I should get on book talk um right now my TikTok is basically I haven't posted anything and all my likes are like dog videos and like people falling down so I'm like I gotta get on book talk <laughs> get on book talk uh, <laughs> it's time yeah. it is time <laughs> it is it is really fun it's like the crazier side of bookstagram <laughs> like okay. well, more unhinged bookstagram <laughs> but it's fun okay i think our our next question kind of circles back to the more technical side um like we were just talking about so if you were to make a list um or like a step-by-step -step guide for must-haves for self-publishing um what do you think your top five things would be for people who are looking to get started doing this 
I think what has helped me the most is honestly like doing the research. Um, mm -hmm. Now I'm not a Facebook person at all, but Facebook is huge for authors. It, a lot of readers are on Facebook. A lot of author groups are on Facebook and there is so much information that you can find from really good. I mean, not all groups, but there mm -hmm. are some really good author groups on Facebook and there are, I mean, just so much information to learn from. Like, don't even comment. Don't even ask questions. Just mm. go and search through the posts and you will learn so much about the process, about any question you might have has already been asked before. Mm. And, you know, you can set your expectations because people will post how much they make. They, they, you know, they will post like how long it took them to write. They, Everything you could know is in there. And I think that if you... I'm, I'm definitely the type of person that likes to jump into stuff. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that's bad, but I think that if you jump into things without doing the proper research, it can be hard. And of course there are really good books out there about this and, you know, websites as well, but seeing groups of authors that are able to update you in real time and tell you, you know, this is my experience. And then you can compare them to others because obviously no one's going to have the same experience. Mm -hmm. It's been so like that's the number one thing that's helped me on my journey is cool. finding authors to like learn from and investing in a good computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I became like a MacBook user because it is just so much easier to use. Mm -hmm. um, I love Vellum for mm -hmm. formatting. It's literally my favorite thing in the world because it makes it so easy. I love Photoshop. That has been a whole other thing because I was not a Photoshop user before I started this journey, but being able to create graphics on your own. And of course you can outsource this, but if you don't have the money, you're going to need to learn how to do stuff. And so that's super important. And, you know, everything else, it's all a learning process. Like I'm still just trial and error <laughs> in my career at this point, but I, that's kind of the fun part. Like I love mm -hmm. trying something and if it works awesome. And if it doesn't, let's pivot to the next thing. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my viewpoint. <laughs> that's a really good attitude. Cause then there's me. If I try something, it doesn't work. I'm like, you are an utter failure. <laughs> you will never get this right. You well, know, I go I've to the dark been, side. <laughs> I've been there so many times. And so I get that. Like, that's my mm -hmm. first mental go-to. But mm -hmm. I've had to, like, push that aside. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, whatever. Pivot to the next. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that description. <laughs> um, so kind of bouncing off of that, how much of it do you how much of the process have you taught yourself and how much of it have you hired out? I mean, pretty much all of it I've done ex with the exception of editing. Mm -hmm. um, and like my first book cover, which I definitely suggest getting professional designers to do your covers. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I left my job. I didn't have, by the time I wanted to do my second book, I didn't have the income that I had had previously. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was like, I need to learn how to do this for myself or else I'm going to end up buying like a cheap cover that I'm not going to love. So I'm going to try to learn. And, you know, like I said, it was trial and error. I ended up switching the cover, but now I am pretty confident in Photoshop and I, I just had to throw myself into it and learn it. Um, yeah, now I do, I do have a, like, if I can afford it at the time for the second book, I didn't hire a PR company because um, mm -hmm. again, finances, but for this one I did. And I, um, and they're doing like a bookstagram, like book tour thing and helping with ARC readers. And I have a PA who's helping with ARC readers. But other than that, I do pretty much everything else. <laughs> so, wow. That's really interesting. I've never considered that like doing a PR company, um, have you found that super helpful? Is that something you'd recommend if people have the money for it? I think that if you have the money for it and you have the goal to just get exposure and not necessarily expect to make any kind of money back from it or anything, mm -hmm. um, it can be helpful. I definitely don't think that you need to spend the money on it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. But if you have the extra money, 
it is helpful for exposure and mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it takes away a little bit of the time that you would spend, you know, trying to put your book everywhere. <laughs> like you mm -hmm. can post so many times, you can only share so many times and you also don't want to be annoying and, or at least I don't want to be like, that's my biggest fear mm -hmm. is yeah. annoying and like spamming people <laughs> with my stuff. So if someone else is doing it for you, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Yeah, and it doesn't look so bad. Like I mentioned this on uh, one of our other episodes. When I first started on Bookstagram, I followed like a ton of authors just like right off the bat. And I found like a lot of them were always posting the same graphics. Like every day they'd post the same graphic advertising mm. their book. And I was like, I can't follow them. Like they don't post anything in substance. It's basically like, like I see enough ads already. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, but you know, now if I'm scrolling and I see like your posts, I'm like, oh, I like check in and see what you're doing. And then, you know, when I see one of your posts for your books, I'm like, yes, you know, cause they're not, they're not too much when they're yeah. too much. I'm like, oh, another ad for the book. And I scroll. Right? It, it's a, like, yeah, there's, I always worry about that, but I also mm -hmm. know because I've seen those accounts where it's literally, mm -hmm. and not even like a variety of pictures. It's literally it's the, the same, same one graphic <laughs> over and over and over again. Okay. And like, I don't want my page to look like that. Like I have obsessive issues. I didn't like my OCD <laughs> is too much. I need an aesthetically, at least like somewhat mm -hmm. page that's not the same thing over and over again. And so yeah, that annoys me too. Mm. But I'm I'm, I'm not alone. people do that and it works for them. I don't know. I don't mm. get it. <laughs> yeah, That's I don't know. I you that it's so different. And experimenting is, I think, one of the most important things mm -hmm. to do away because you never know what's going to work for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Experimenting is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, Is some of your books are available on Kindle Unlimited, right? Yes. Is that, what has that experience been like? It is an experiment. Um, when I was first, before I published, um, I didn't know which route to take. Yeah. And I know that long-term you, at least I've seen in in these author groups that I <laughs> belong mm -hmm. in, wide publishing is the name of the game. It yeah. is what's going to make a career for you. It's what's going to be the most beneficial. Yeah. But especially in my genre, romance is huge in Kindle Unlimited. And yeah. for a no-name author to get exposure from people and get them to read your book without necessarily having to spend money because they're already buying the subscription. So they can mm -hmm. read it for free since they've already paid for the subscription. Yeah. They're, not, they're taking a chance on you without investing really. And I figured, and I think a lot of people do figure it's like a good way to kind of break in um, but I've noticed that I, I mean, I do get reads. I definitely get page reads, but I've noticed some people have way more, you know, when we compare numbers and I don't mean to compare in a bad way, just like to discuss and they have way more page reads, but I might sell more eBooks. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know why, honestly, <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong Mystery. <laughs> like, with getting page reads. Like, like a friend of mine had like five times the number of page reads in like literally a month compared wow. to my, like six months. And I'm like, how did she do that? Like what, like what? And she didn't, she didn't do anything differently. Mm -hmm. It was literally just someone found it and it took off. And so I think that there's a lot you can control, but there's also a lot you can't. And, um, yeah. and I'm doing fine. And I definitely am going to continue Kindle Unlimited for a okay. while, but it is something that I always think about, like, well, because you can't compare. It's not like, you, I mean, you do it for three months and it can auto renew or you can stop and go wide, but it's hard to start wide. Mm -hmm. And so it's time to, you know, get exposure and find wide readers. Mm -hmm. And then the people that knew you were in Kindle Unlimited might be like, well, she's not in there anymore. And some people only read that because that's what they pay for. And yeah. So it's kind of, it's one of those things that I know a lot of authors, at least a lot of like newer authors 
struggle with because there's so many different sides to it and you don't want to choose the wrong one and I don't know yeah I might mm-hmm. I might do a different series wide and see what happens but then again it's like people that love this series might be disappointed and I don't know so mm-hmm. it's hard I know that it's common for a lot of really successful indie authors to end up going wide at some point and okay. people might have a problem with that but there's also readers that only read on Apple Books or Kobo, and so they can't get your books. And so you can't please everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you get paid per page reads? Like, how does that break out for Kill Unlimited? So you get paid per page read, and it's mm. only the first go around. If you reread a book, it doesn't count. Um, oh, darn. But you, yeah. But if you read like half a book, you'll get those pages, and that's it. Um, mm-hmm. and then actual number varies because they pull it from like this pot of like all of the subscriptions. And so uh. it's like, mil- so it varies, but I think it ends up working out to be like, maybe I'm trying to think of how much I get. So I sell my books for, I'll do the first one. I sell the first one for like two ninety nine. I think if I sell an ebook at two ninety nine, I make, and it all depends on the file size too. Yes, but I make like like two dollars and six cents or something like that. And then if someone reads the whole thing, I might make like a dollar twenty or something like that. So it is, but that's because I have shorter books. They there might be people that have six hundred page books. Kindle Unlimited is great for them because if people read through, they're getting way more. Yeah, they're getting more money per book. 200 and something page book. So, right. yeah, it's all there's so much to factor in, and it can be like so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I'm a little overwhelmed listening. Um, I have Kindle <laughs> Unlimited, and I, I totally fall for that trap of I pay for Kindle Unlimited every month, and it comes off my visa like automatically. And then when I go on there, I'm like, oh, read for free. Like I didn't, like I paid for it, but it's such a great little marketing trick because I'm like, I'll download all these books. They're free. (laughs) But that being said, I actually don't like reading on Kindle Unlimited on my phone. I don't like it. I'd rather read on my Kobo because it feels like a book Um, or my like physical books. But that's where you get into the preference of like, I ordered your book in print because I was like, well, I want to take a picture for the gram, obviously. (laughs) Um, But I actually read the arc um, on my phone or whatever. And that was fine. I was just taking it with me everywhere. But it's, uh, yeah, I think that's actually the main thing that keeps me from reading more on Kindle Unlimited. Is yeah. I just don't really, you know, because I think when I'm on my phone, like people text me, I'm like, go oh, wait, I'm reading a romance book. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got the Kindle Paperwhite for that reason because Ooh. I want to read and then I will go and read an ebook on my phone and I will get distracted because mm-hmm. I see a text or I see an email or, yeah. And so, mm-hmm. so yeah, I got the Kindle for that reason. But, you know, I pay for Kindle Unlimited because it is good for authors, I think, too, because mm-hmm. I can read other authors' stuff. And not, you know, like I'd be buying books all the time, <laughs> you know, like I can't afford to buy every book I want to buy. Anyway, so <laughs> I do love Kindle Unlimited. I know I, I pay for it every month, but I don't get my money's worth. Yeah, I don't either. I end up mm. not reading at all because I'm writing or I mm-hmm. end up reading a book that is not in Kindle Unlimited or I will start... <sighs> I'm the worst mood reader. Well, I'll start one and I'll 30 yes. pages and then it's fine. It's good. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm like, mm, I'm going to go to this one now. And then I never yeah. like go back and I have like 15 books that I'm cycling through and it's so hard. Yeah. So I feel like I'm just I'm so guilty of that. Minute. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> People that aren't mood readers, like they just pick up whatever they want to read and just read it. I'm like, that's nice. That must be nice. Right. Like I picked up uh, the sequel to For the Wolf, so For the Throne, and I got like 20 pages in. I'm like, this is so great. But then I was like, you know, it's just too summery out to read this. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it back on the shelf. I'm like, I'm gonna pick you up on a cold, rainy day, and it will be perfect. But you have to wait. Like that's it's so annoying. <laughs> yes, I'm. It's so funny. And I was. I wanted to read my friend Kimberly Ann's book, uh, Canadian Fall, because I had read Canadian Spring and Canadian Summer. But I'm like, it is still too hot. Like I need it to be yeah. cool or fall. It's not. It, it needs to actually be a fall. Yes. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh, wait. My God. I love that I'm not alone in this because sometimes no. I feel like I'm I'm crazy. Like I'm putting the book on my shelf and I'm like, thank goodness no one can see me being so weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then I talk about it on the show so everybody now knows. everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> Just being uh, straight up with you guys. <laughs> anyway, as I got off topic again, um, so you have print copies of your books, which I love because a lot of indie authors don't have print copies. And like I just said, I love having physical copies for the gram and for the library. So can you tell us a bit about the process for doing print books and how you distribute them? Yeah. So there's a lot of, well, not a lot. There are multiple options. I hmm. went the easiest route because I knew I was new at this and I didn't want to like have too much to learn at one time because that's already a lot mm -hmm. so I just went through KDP with Amazon um for my first one I did do Barnes and Noble Press as well on my second book I don't think I've sold <laughs> any through them I think no. most people use Amazon and mm -hmm. um, and it's nice if you have a big audience it's nice to be able to offer your books in multiple places mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's worth it for me right now. Um, I also make less money at Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Printing costs is higher. So, um, and Ingram Spark is good because they will distribute to everywhere, most places for you. Like you can get into Walmart and Target. Um, oh, okay. And actually, people that get into the Barnes and Noble brick and mortar stores, they usually buy it from Ingram as opposed to their own press. So, Oh, it's interesting. A lot of, yeah. yeah, a lot of bookstores or a lot of people go through Ingram because of costs. So Ingram yeah. is pretty mm -hmm. big. Ingram is, and it's what, yeah, it's what stores buy from. So yeah. mm -hmm. if you want to distribute wide for your paperback, which you can do even if you're in Kindle Unlimited, um, you can distribute your paperback through them. And then I always recommend uploading to Amazon separately um, mm -hmm. because you cut out the middleman and make more royalties that way. But um, I didn't do that only because first of all, they do charge you and mm -hmm. uploading through Amazon is free. And like I said, I didn't want to learn a whole because you have to format it and kind of upload it differently. And so it's just extra step. And once you get into it, I'm sure it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I wanted to keep it easy for this first series because I'm already doing so much that I was like, let me just not worry about that right now. Yeah. But, you know, there are differences, um, the slight differences in terms of like the book, the way the book looks. Like I know some people are happier with the covers from Ingram, um, but I'm really happy with the qualities of my paperbacks, at least the ones that I got as author copies. They're beautiful. They, I've had no problem. I should knock on wood because <laughs> we'll talk about problems with PDP and getting messed up books and mm -hmm. errors, but I have not had that issue. So mm -hmm. I'm, it's fine for now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the paperback I have, I got it through Amazon, the one of your book, and it came like perfect. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, you could have bought that at any bookstore and been like, yeah, this is great, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so I was like, uh, yeah, I was glad you answered that question because I was like, that paperback was nice. I gotta, we gotta have a question about the paperback. Right? Like, I was, I was actually surprised because I get a lot of paperbacks from like Target and whatever. And, mm. you know, some of like the trade paperbacks are, like they're they're good they're fine but the like the paper's thinner mm -hmm. and yeah paper thinner and so I was expecting that and when I got mine I was like ooh mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is it's a real I, book <laughs> yeah like I really I really was happy with it so mm -hmm. I definitely don't regret that decision but you know mm -hmm. there's something to be said about like throwing all your eggs in one basket like I am fearful <laughs> that like putting all of my stuff in Amazon could come back to bite me because I know some people have issues with them. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of that, but then there seems to be like such a huge amount of people that have a lot of success with it. So it's yeah. kind of, you know. I think you hear about the horror stories because they're like people losing their accounts or people, you mm -hmm. know, like that's such a big deal that obviously everyone's going to talk about it, but it, there are millions of books that are published all the time. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to pick your brain about all of your uh, print book settings when it comes yes. to be my turn because I want to know. I, 
please do. I love this, like the industry talk. I love talking about it. I love talking about the business side of it and like the Mm -hmm. actual, like all of it, (laughs) formatting, everything. So please do. Excellent. I love us writers. We just in, we just like embrace like all the stuff that other people are like. That's nerdy. We're like actually <laughs> over here. It's cool. So. <laughs> I, like, I will be the biggest nerd about this stuff. And yeah, it's the best. I love it. Excellent. Love it. Okay. <laughs> um, I would like to stay in this topic, but we do have to move on to the next one. <laughs> My nemesis <laughs> is marketing questions. Um, oh, so I'm, I'm delighted that you're here for this because this is why we asked you on the show. Um, oh, yeah. Marketing is a beast. And like you said, a lot of people don't enjoy it. I'm one of those people. I, I use social media because I know exposure and whatever, but I don't like it. Um, I don't know how to use it. Maria is obviously a lot better at it than I am. I'm just kind of, I lurk (laughs) and I like things and I might comment once in a blue moon and that is why I have issues. But, um, (laughs) if you can, could you describe your social media strategy in a paragraph? In I I don't know, as many words as you need, but (laughs) some kind of description that will make sense to, to people like me. So first of all, I definitely don't, like I totally get how you feel and I don't think that authors should like force themselves to become a totally different person if they don't want to like Mm. if you don't enjoy it obviously like from a business standpoint yes I think that there should be like some effort but if you don't enjoy it like don't waste your time doing it all the time um but on the other side of it like I thought that about TikTok like I was so scared of it I thought it was stupid I didn't want any like my kid uses TikTok. Like I was like, why am I getting on here? And, and then once I embraced it, I was like, this is really fun. And so I think that there are definitely ways of finding what works for you and just focusing on that and not worrying about the rest. Like I don't like Twitter. I don't, it's too fast for me. I can't Mm. keep up with it. I don't like the interface. Like I don't like anything about it. I do have a Twitter and I post once in a while, but I just don't spend my time there. I don't put effort into it. Um, And the same with Facebook. I am on Facebook a little more because, you know, it is a good uh, platform, but it's not where I want to spend time scrolling and interacting Mm -hmm. because it's just not my cup of tea. And so I really put my effort into Instagram and TikTok and I I don't really have an actual strategy, but (laughs) if I were to (laughs) explain my strategy, it would just be finding, yeah, interacting with people. I enjoy their content, um, Mm -hmm. making sure I cater my pay. And this is actually something that I started to do. And you mentioned your feed is all like dog videos. So Mm -hmm. with TikTok, especially you can train its algorithm by just focusing on what you want to see and what, Mm -hmm. and who you want to target to see your stuff. So I actually just opened a new account for like my general scrolling um, because sometimes I would be like, oh, this cleaning TikTok is interesting. This organization TikTok is interesting, <laughs> whatever. And then like none of it was books. And I was like, oh, I'm not targeting the right people. <laughs> so I started a new account for all that stuff. And then I'm mm-hmm. trying to like target the right people. And not because like, like I still interact and I'm, it, it's still genuine, but I want my to go out to people that are also interested in that and Mm -hmm. not like people that don't care about books so Mm -hmm. um that's mostly my strategy is just to find people that like the same stuff I do and kind of be as genuine as I can I don't like and I think people are starting to do this less or at least I hope Mm -hmm. they are but like the cold dming and oh yeah you know like just leaving comments that are like you could copy and paste it to a hundred different accounts. Like don't be like that. Just like find people you enjoy and genuinely comment on their stuff, share it, um, just be supportive. And that's how I've always kind of led this. I mean, a lot of stuff is still learning to like TikTok is always changing and Instagram's mm-hmm. always changing too. And I feel like Instagram is so much harder to use nowadays. Yeah. Like, I had an account years ago for like my poetry work and it was so easy to grow and then one day it just stopped Mm -hmm. and then ever since then Instagram has just like not been the same and I think that was like a few years ago they changed Mm -hmm. their own 
stuff and they keep making changes. And now it's like, and I don't look at the numbers all the time. Like I, I really don't because that's not really what I care about, but you know, it is a business. So you do yeah, have, to you do look at it. it. Yeah. Like if I have to, mm-hmm. <laughs> because also I'm so like sensitive that I'm like, Oh, like, why do people not like this? I've reached this many people, but only two liked it. Yes. Like, so I don't look at it, but if I have to, um, I've definitely seen like a huge decrease in engagement mm-hmm. and um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not worried about it. Like I'm, I try not to stress about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, I've noticed a lot of, sorry, I've noticed a lot of changes in uh, Instagram, like since I started our bookstagram, like it was easy, easy to grow, lots of likes on our posts, lots of interaction. Um, I saw lots of accounts on my feed and now it's like, I only see the same people and they'll, the same people only see our posts. We're down to like, sometimes like probably like 40 likes on one of our posts one day. I was like, that is really weird considering we have like 2,500 followers mm-hmm. or whatever. So it has changed a lot. And that is the other thing that's making me think I will get on book talk, but I don't like making videos. So we, <laughs> we will see. <laughs> oh, book yeah. talk scares me. I have not, I, I do not have a TikTok account. I'm just, uh, just saying. You just look at open the ones that I send you all yep. the time. And yep. that's, you don't have to, um, mm-hmm. you know, not everybody. I don't know. I, I honestly feel like it's just do what you like. And yeah. if you don't like, mm-hmm. then, you know, that's the other thing. I can't afford to do a lot of ads. I, I've never mm-hmm. done an ad. I wanted to get okay. into it for the release, but I haven't yet. Um, because it intimidates me, yeah. <laughs> like learning the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also it's expensive and I don't have the money for that. So social media is, you know, free and mm-hmm. it, it helps get the word out. But that's the thing. If you don't like social media, but you can even just a little bit of money invest that in ads, then maybe you don't need as much social media. Yeah, that's a very good point. And you actually answered my next question, so I don't have to ask it. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Um, But that does kind of push me into the next one. Like we, we talk a lot about ads, organic versus paid. Like there's bunch of different ways you can go you can do book bub you can do um book sirens or i think there's book sprout is one we haven't talked about before um and those are kind of all very book focused i haven't tried any of them so i don't know how they work but i've heard good and bad um but the thing that a lot of book marketing can hinge on i guess is reviews um and that those are huge for especially for indie authors um so how how does your review process look? How do you go about getting reviews for your books? Um, yeah, so it's hard <laughs> because a lot of people just don't leave reviews. So organically, yeah. it's really hard yeah. to get reviews. Um, so I am not, I try to do my own arc team, like be in charge of it. and mm. But I'm the worst at following up because I don't want to bother people. <laughs> I'm like, I am the same. I cannot yes. like be like, okay, guys, it's time to review. Can you send me a link so I know you did it? Like that's no, I could never do that. So <laughs> I passed it off. I got a wonderful PA. Her name is Amy, and she does it now for me. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I just post about, hey, I have an art team. Like I'm opening my art team. If you want to art read this for me. Um, here's the link and they can sign up. It's a Google form. It's super easy. And then she does all that stuff. And then if she told me (laughs) that if people don't review, then they won't be on the list next time. I I would never be able to do that, but Amy's in charge now. (laughs) (laughs) Amy's the bad cop. cop. Amy's the boss. Like she's the one. It's her. So um, we all need an Amy. Oh my gosh. Amy, this, I told her, I was like, I need someone to be in charge of me because like, I cannot do like, I'm really good at some, some things, but I'm, I can't do other things. And I need someone to like, you know, be my boss. And so she's like, oh, that's no problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> it um, but also the PR company I went through as well, they do, they have in-house reviewers. So um, they don't force them. It's just, they post about the book and anyone that's in their, in, in their house 
will get an ARC copy of it and they can leave their review. Wow. So I, I'm getting it from two ways now. So I'm hoping that it'll be better than before, um, mm -hmm. which wasn't bad or anything. It's just, it's hard, especially when you're not well known. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like some people are so popular that people fight over arcs and they only give out so many and people get really disappointed when they don't get one. And it's like, I can't imagine that because <laughs> I'm like, please take my book. Please. please. Take my please, free book. Please help. Yeah, take my free book. Right? Take my free Thank book. <laughs> Okay, oh, that, that that kind of that answers my next question again. You're you're good at this. I like this. Okay, um, which was like, do you have some kind of hype team, hype team, or street team? You have an ARC team. You have a PR company. Yeah. Um, are there any other groups that you use to help you promo um, your books? No, because I yeah. tr I tried to do a street team and mm -hmm. it failed because I was like, oh, I don't want them to get sick of me. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then like I just. I, I dropped the ball and like, just, mm. I was like, oh, that's not really working. And I was like, hey, Amy, should we do a street team? And she's like, I don't like street teams. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, thank you, boss. <laughs> Decision made. Thanks, boss. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, I do think, because I think her reasoning is that like, people end up posting the same exact graphic and it kind of gets like uh, spammy if you like look at certain hashtags. And I totally get that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are other street teams that are like really, it's more of like, like a, fun group that you belong to and there's like a chat and you do fun stuff and I love that idea it's just hard for me to implement that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um so maybe one day so what is next for your writing career and what are you working on right now that you can tell us about <laughs> Ooh, yeah. the tea for the tea grannies yes ma'am right. yes yeah. <laughs> So the back here is my like board that I write everything on. <laughs> um, so I have the release that just came out when you're listening mm -hmm. to this is Into the Light. Um, I have an anthology I'm a part of that is for reproductive rights and bodily autonomy. All of the proceeds are going to that. That's called Sacred and that will be out October 31st. Cool. Um, Yes. So I'm really excited about that one. It's going to be like 15 or 16 um, different, all different subgenres of romance. So like we have fantasy, we have PNR, we have contemporary, we have suspense. Wow. Um, and they're all new, you know, new works and stuff like that. Some novellas, some short stories. So it's going to be really fun. And then um, in November, I have a Christmas novella for my Moon Harbor series. And I just wanted to do like something super tropey, like super fun. And like, it's mm -hmm. going to be a snowed in forced proximity, Christmassy, like <laughs> all the things I love. It's like Hallmark movie, but you know, not. I need it. I love bad Christmas movies. So I'd love <laughs> yeah. to read a good Christmas novella. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that has but, all know, those yeah. vibes. Hallmark <laughs> spice so <laughs> it's yes. gonna be that and also like a way to catch up with the other characters so that's mm -hmm. gonna be fun um so that's november and then january i haven't announced the title yet but i'm gonna have book four of moon harbor out oh, so exciting oh my gosh you have so much going on i i'm not doing anything with my writing and stuff right now it's, i'm just it's really because i get excited <laughs> about something and then i can't yeah. I, I announce it so then I can't back out. <laughs> that, is, that is smart. You that kind is... of hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. You're like, if I don't do it, all these people are going to judge me. Um, that that <laughs> was the thing that scared me the most about the third book that I just put out. Like I put off put, announcing a date for months because mm -hmm. I was like, but I, I don't know if I'll be ready and I don't want to force it. So I'm not going to say anything. I just put it off and put it off. Everyone just... was like, when is it coming out? You keep <laughs> saying summer. What does that mean? So... Oh. <laughs> I feel you and that's the thing I'm the kind of person that if I'm like oh I don't know if I'll be ready I'll never be ready like I mm, but if yeah. I say a date I'll be ready like I'll you force myself to. and of course yeah. like if something happens and I have to extend it a little bit like mm -hmm. that's the beauty in self-publishing but yeah. like no you have to get it done so it's either going to be then or it's going to or you're going to feel bad extending it like <laughs> I had to do that before and I was like I'm such a failure like this is the oh, worst no. <laughs> it was two weeks. like it wasn't even a big deal people were like this like 
nobody even pays attention to release dates anyway. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. But I'm like, That's true. Yeah. Know. I was so upset about it. And then I was like, I can't do that again. So I just like guilt myself into putting things out. I don't know. I think that's that's amazing. Using using guilt as a superpower instead of as a detriment. That's what it is. Like turn it around. <laughs> because if you're gonna have it anyway, you might as well use it to your advantage. Okay, Elise and I are recovering people pleasers. Yeah. So I think that this is something we need to incorporate into our lives. Oh my like, gosh. Use uh, it to our advantage. Yeah. Take <laughs> take the power away from the guilt and use it for you your go. Mm. plans. I love this. Yes. I like that oh you gosh. said recovering people pleasers, because yeah. I'm a people pleaser, yeah. but I yes, that's what I am trying yeah. I'm trying to recover from it. So that's what it's I'm really gonna... hard. It's really <laughs> it's really hard. hard. I can't even email the people that said they wanted to be on my street team. Like, <laughs> I'm like, this is too annoying. Like, they're not going to want to hear from me. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. We are the same. Uh, I, oh, my gosh. So, I love yeah, it, though. We're I'm not glad alone. we're not alone. Yeah, it's such a, it's a real pain in the butt. But, you know, we're getting there. That's why I say we're in, we're in recovery. Yeah, we're getting there. I love Every day is a little better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, Thank you so much for coming on our show. That was amazing. And I feel like I learned so much that I'm yeah. going to like do the same thing I did with our trad publishing episode where I like listen to our episode and take my take own notes. Copious notes. <laughs> yeah, for myself. I'll be doing that again. Um, this is great. So we'll make sure we put your, all your social media handles and everything like that in the notes for our episode. So if any of our lovely listeners would like to buy Kate's books, which you should, or follow her on her socials. We will have that information for you guys in the show notes. Yes. And yeah, is there anything you wanted to add before we finish up? No, I just wanted to thank you guys for having me. It was so much fun. Um, I love your podcast and yeah, I'm had a lot of fun and I always want to talk business. So <laughs> if you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out. Oh, good. You might regret saying that to me. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the tea on surviving self-publishing. Don't forget to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on Instagram at the Tea Grannies Podcast and on Twitter at the Tea Grannies. We'll see you next time for our final episode of season two. Happy writing. <laughs>